Everybody, it's Tom Foster, the world of marketing. And today I've got a super cool guest, a fellow peer. Fellow peer, I think that's the right way to say it. Fellow peer, it sounds kind of funny. But Chris Carr of Ferrotech. Did I say that right? Ferrotech? Yep. Yep, Ferrotech. So Chris Carr is another web development, website, web digital marketing company. And he and I met online. This is the first time that he and I have talked. We have no game plan as usual. I have no game plan for this podcast. We'll see what happens. But Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, man. This is wonderful. This is awesome. You already gave me a great tip. He told me about this cool center cam that he uses for his, uh, his uh, doing his own podcast. He has a podcast himself. What is your podcast, Chris? I have two. I have Digital Marketing Masterclass, where I, I talk with people like you um, about, so I've, I'm, I'm live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Wednesdays, uh, I have peers like you, they jump on the podcast and we just, we just wrap marketing, just whatever's, whatever's kind of trending, whatever's hot, whatever tips, tra- tips, hacks, tricks, whatever you got. You know, so that's, that's on Wednesdays, Tuesdays. Cool, Tuesdays. man. We'll have to tune into that. Yeah, I yeah. think I'm going to be on that in sometime in March, aren't I? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Very cool. Well, I appreciate you reaching out to me and um, and doing this. So let's talk a little bit about you. Sure. Um, I got some notes here that you started this gig back in 2001. Why don't you tell us about how you got into this business? Sure. You know, I was uh, I was about 23 years old. Um, Right out of college, I, I lived overseas in Honduras and was building houses and doing stuff in the developing world. And something happened. My, my grandmom got sick and I, I came home and sort of had to get into real life. And uh, by real life, I mean, I had bills and, and the normal responsibilities. Tackled that with the normal jobs. I went into pharma for a while. And then after that, I went into, I was at Vanguard. And in, the, in, the, in all of that time, um, there was a girlfriend I had in college that I, I, in, I tried to build her a website. We, we broke up and I thought that this way to get her back would to be to build a website to uh, put her artwork on. Uh, we never got back together. But in that process, I learned how to code, learned how to do some web development. And um, from that point on, you know, uh, Faratech went from a side hustle to a full-time job, to employees, to payroll to heartburn <laughs> right yeah. 20, 21 years ago. <laughs> yeah yeah and it's funny you- though because, uh, the 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 joke that i have is that um you know in my first three years of business I, I i doubled my income every year for three years straight which was amazing but that just showed how little money i made in year one <laughs> right like hot dogs and ramen noodles in year one. <laughs> year two, a little more ramen noodles. But yeah. that was back in the days where, you know, you were showing fire to cavemen with websites and nobody had a website. Nowadays, it's way different. Now, now, now I never got. Yeah. I mean, in 1999, building a website for your, for your ex-girlfriend was like, that was a big deal. <laughs> right. right. Now, like, Oh yeah, I'll spin you one up on Wix and, and we'll be up in an hour. I'm like, you have no idea. Like, like you said, I was like rubbing sticks together to build a website. Back right. You had to learn, you had to act, you had to actually write HTML. You had to actually write code. There was no WYSIWYG, really. I mean, yeah. Dream. What did you use? What did you use? Dreamweaver. Yeah, yeah. Dreamweaver, of course. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We still use that. That was that's the main, that's the main yep. and where. And our systems are built on cold fusion. We have our own proprietary system that, wow. that I made. It's called DSS because uh, that was before WordPress or anything like that. And we built a, 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 a system because we don't use WordPress or HubSpot or any of that stuff. We have our own proprietary system. Gotcha. So nice. tell me a little bit about though like do you have a niche that you guys focus on um i know that you've got you you're you're focused on both art and science it looks to me like you got some medical companies that you work with but i don't i don't want to put words in your mouth why don't you tell me a little bit about what your niche is 
Well, I mean, the art and the science essentially is, is that, you know what, as a marketing company, there's, there's creative companies that create really cool, really slick looking websites. And then eventually the boss or, you know, your client says, Hey, does this work? Does it convert? Does it turn into qualified traffic? Does it turn into leads? Does it turn into any of those things? And I'm like, well, I can't really calculate that, but I can say it looks pretty damn cool. Right. Then you have the other company <laughs> that is like, it, it works like a machine, just like what Craigslist does, you know, like it, it, it's, it's, it's a well-oiled machine, but like, as soon as people see it, they immediately bounce because they don't think you're a professional enough looking company, but it does work very well. And so the art and science is basically saying, Hey, you know what? Conversion is a science, but we have to marry really great creative, and really great aesthetics. And as opposed to like me doing one portion and hiring out another company, we worked really hard to put both of those, a creative agency and you know, conversion scientists all in one, all under one roof. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do too. I mean, you've got to do that. You're, we call it a, my little uh, thing for it is attract, convert, retain. You've got mm -hmm. to get your traffic, obviously, to your brand, to your, to your website, and mm -hmm. you're attracting traffic and all the things that you do, you know, adding content, uh, doing SEO, uh, doing your social media, everything that you're doing to drive traffic, but then you've got to convert that traffic into a lead. And that's a whole different ball game. And that has to do yeah. with design and, and calls to action and, you know, making sure that you have good landing pages and you don't, you don't, you're right. I mean, you don't send that traffic away, you know, that you've worked so hard and paid, so, you know, whether you're doing pay-per-click or whatever you're doing to get that traffic. So when did that kind of dawn on you that 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 there is an art and a science? What you know, what you call an art and science, we we call a track and retain. When did they? When did you figure that out? Well, it was sort of born organically. So in the beginning, I was just a web development company, and I have clients that say, "Hey, you built me a really great website, right?" But I'm not getting enough traffic. So then I got into right. building websites and SEO. Right. And now they're saying, you got me a website. I've got a lot of traffic, but my phone is not ringing. Our forms aren't being filled out. What's the deal there? So then I started to get into conversion science. You know, more recently, um, you know, I've even gotten into what we call flywheel effect, which flywheel effect is trying to find individuals who have converted those clients and trying to get more referrals. Right. Yeah. That generates leads, nurtures leads, and then converts those leads into raving fans that get you more referrals. Yeah. So, you know, so the, it's, it's basically a flywheel effect, but it was born literally out of me hopping from just saying, you know what, clients weren't a hundred percent satisfied with a website alone. <laughs> then they needed traffic, then they needed conversion. Now the number one way to, to, to overcome the trust barrier is referrals too. And so that's sort of the system that we built. You know, I mean, in the most ideal sense, what we're looking to do is have individuals come into your website and engage with your website. Uh, we're going to, put technology on your on your website to, to put a piece of tracking code on their website, on their devices. And we're going to basically track every engagement that they do. We're going right. to lead score everything that they do. And after we've lead scored them, what we're going to be able to do is strategically drip market them, push them down the funnel. And after they've converted and they become a client, we're going to have triggers in your client relationship to, to basically know when to push the button to ask for referrals. So that's kind of the system that you're trying to build. Because yep. the opposite of what we want to do is just get a phone call and be like, do you know SEO? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, we need 3000 a month and, and, and we're ready to go. Like that's just doesn't, isn't how we work. You know, right. Cause what you're talking about is full digital marketing spectrum is, right. is not just SEO, which is really just getting traffic and using con, you know, optimized content uh, getting traffic. But, but what you're talking about, you know, you know is, is, then applying the CRM aspect of it, which is, uh, and I, that's exactly what we do. So we do the same damn thing. We just do it with different systems, but um, yeah. it's great. So you, you've got this, uh, what is this where you allow your clients to be the quarterback? Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think what happens here is just that um, we have, let me just do something real quick. 
is it okay if I share my screen? Yeah, please do. Yeah, I'll show you the demo that we that we did. Not a demo. It's it's it's, it's a couple slides, but Sweet. our argument is is that marketing is moving really fast. And what happens is most companies hire someone and they say, oh, I have a marketing person. And I think that's awesome. I think, you know, we call that person Marketing Mary, but with Marketing Mary, unless she's working 120 hours a week, there's no way she's going to be able to be a subject matter expert in website development, analytics, content strategy, SEO, uh, usability conversion analysis, social media. It's just not possible. In fact, there's one blog for every seven people in the United States. And every single minute, just gobs and gobs of content are going out. Yep. Yep. So Mary's usually at a crossroads. Usually she's going to say, hey, I'm going to hire. Uh, I'm gonna, maybe I'm going to hire a content writer. And then maybe I'm going to outsource my social media. Uh, SEO is hard, so I'm going to need an SME for that. I'm taxing my web guy. And everything has to be on brand. And so what happens here is you wake up one day and you're either using multiple vendors or you have a lot of overhead. So what we That's do is me, buddy. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of overhead. You and me both, man. Yep. So what I do is I hire the team so you don't have to. And so this is a team-based approach. Uh, you know, we have about 50 employees. And what happens is that you only have to hire the subject matter experts as you need them. And then what happens here is, is that marketing Mary, as opposed to being the person who's writing blogs and doing execution, Mary is now your quarterback. She's running our system. She has a team that's able to execute. And what happens here is, is when you compare putting Mary and making her the quarterback versus just trying to hire and use multiple vendors, you know, you're coming in at a deep, deep discount. And then yeah. finally, you know, finally, you know, my company alone drops about seven thousand dollars a month just on analytics tools alone. So the the price of a retainer just to hire an organization like us, I'm already putting out in software. So you're sort of already getting that for free, you know? So if I'm a company and I want to win and I want to use competitive tools, it might take me, it might cost me seven grand just to be competitive. And I don't even have a person to run the tools. Right. You know I mean? So that's, that's sort of our core argument. Um, that's our core argument in, in, in making Mary the quarterback. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get rid of Mary. A lot of, a lot of CMOs, when they meet me, they're like, I'm going to be out of a job. I'm like, no, you're going to be the quarterback. Yeah, you got to run this thing, but you need, and you're right, 100%. No one person can do it all. Mm -hmm. We have the same exact, we, same exact setup and same exact argument. You know, it costs, it, it costs you 60 grand to hire us to do it. And mm -hmm. we'll do all of it. We'll do all your content. We'll do all your SEO. We'll do manage your pay-per-click. We'll manage your social media. But you got to have somebody over there, whether it's you or marketing manager, being the quarterback of everything. Um, but that's yeah. way less expensive than all exactly right. All the software tools that you need for all the SEO tools that you need. Uh, you summed it up very well, my man. We're in the same Thanks. business. So do you, like I asked you before, but I don't think I got a, a, do you have a particular niche that you work with or is it all over the place? 40% healthcare. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of SaaS. We do, do a lot with uh, manufacturing and industrial, but transparently our systems kind of system agnostic. So another I mean, company agnostic, you know, we're about to sign an, an ethanol company in probably in the next 48 hours. And, what happens is that the large portion of what we do is we go out and we headhunt writers that are going to fit your niche. And then they have to try out to work for you, but they actually work. They're under our payroll. And so what happens is I've got 35 writers on our team and they all, they're all 1099 and they sort of move in and out. But a good portion right. of what you do for us is, is the headhunting ability to find content writers and subject matter experts like guns for hire. Right. I see. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We do that. That's why our niche is legal. We work. Uh, yeah. We our niche is lawyers and podiatrists specifically. Wow. So those those are the those are our niche. We have other we have other website. I mean, we can, just like you, we can do it for anybody. But just in terms of who we market and who who we have writers for, if we go out and we have like some kind of different. Um, 
type of uh, a client come in like a gym or, or a dojo or something like that, then we have to hire a writer that knows that. And it's, it's, it's the same kind of thing. So I got a couple more questions for you. So where do you see this going in the future? Like what's, what's happening in our business in the future? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think one of the things that I, this has not changed is, is that you're one algorithm change away from losing a big portion of your business. If you have not, if you put all your eggs in one basket, so you say, I'm going to be only good at SEO, or I'm only going to be good at social media, or I'm only going to be good at paid ads. Like we thought those days were over and then Apple does a privacy update and all of a sudden retargeting ad, it's yep. crap, right? And so what happens here is, is that you have to know that you're building your house on sand. I, uh, I, I'm a contributor for Forbes and that was one of the first articles I wrote was, you know, we're building our house on sand and we act like we're not, you know what I mean? Like we don't own Google. Google can change rules on a dime. Yep. You know, um, Facebook, I remember the days where Facebook came up, you could have a business profile and 40% of the people that subscribe to your brand are basically your fans and followers and connections. 40% of those saw what you post. Now it's 2%. I mean, you can pay to get them, but it's 2%. It went from 40 to two. You think that didn't change the landscape? It did. Right. Apple's privacy update. Google's going to start to do a, a cookie-less world, which is not going to happen, but they're going to say that that's what they're doing. You know, there's all of these things that are changing the landscape. AI will dramatically change yep. how we do things, you know? I mean, mo providers like us are not threatened by Wix, but it will, it will cut out about the 10% of our lowest level clients. Because I have clients that come to me and they're like, hey, I'm looking at a proposal for you if it's $35,000, right? I can do it on Wix and I know it'll be crap, but are you telling me that I'm going to get, you know, let's say hypothetically $29,000 more value from your website than this Wix thing? And I'm like, well, depending on the industry, maybe not. So, you know, I have more enterprise right. level that Wix isn't even a possibility. Right, right, right exactly. That's a toy. People in our space, if Wix is here now, where will, Wix, well, where will Wix be? Where will Wix be in 10 years? AI writing technology, if it's here now, which isn't entirely viable, but where will it be in 10 years? You know, I mean, I've got probably 20 more years in this game before I retire. And I was gonna, that was my next question. Have you been uh, approached to sell the your company? All the time. Yeah, me All too. Yeah. Me too. All the time, every day. It's very interesting. And, you know, because our business has become a commoditized from what it used yep. to be. And you got to, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, you, it's fascinating to me how similar we are. You know, you have 50 employees. I have about 55 employees. Um, uh, and, and we're in different spaces, but it's the same game. It's the same game. Yep. Yep. So let me ask you this final question. How do you manage your work life, your work with your home? Are you married? Do you have kids? Yep. Got a married five-year-old and a three-year-old. And I, I, uh, I survive. I don't thrive. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, just, it's just like one of those things of, it matters where I'm at, you know? And what yeah. I mean by that is that some days, like we're having a terrible Q1 and it's not by like all of our, we had the best Q4 we've ever had and we're having a terrible Q1 and it's literally has nothing to do with anything we're doing wrong. Our pipeline is amazing. We just ran into just, we, you know, our third largest client, their, their funding dried up and we just get a call and they're like, we can't even pay you this month. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Right. Like weird things that happen in business right yeah so now i'm like pulling down on work and then in the summertime i'm going to spend more time with my kids when they have off school and so it's honestly it's, it's a little bit reactive um yep. just because of my kids age you know but you know i have layers of management i have two business partners and i've been doing this for 21 years so i don't get scared much anymore even covid we grew in covid by about 30 yeah, percent. yeah yeah good for you in 2001, I got out of it right after 
2008, the, the real estate market just totally crashed. Um, between COVID, I lost a client. It was, I lost a million dollar client. Um, and I had all of this overhead, you know, that was in 2017. Um, I've seen it all, <laughs> um, you know, and it's funny because I, my business partner says all the time, when you are, when you are on fire, you feel like it's never going to end. And when you're in the valley, you feel like it's never going to rain. <laughs> right, right. You feel like, exactly, but you got to just ride it out. Yeah, yeah. You just got to yeah. ride it out. Well, Chris, I appreciate talking to you, brother, and getting to know you better. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to getting on your podcast here in the next few weeks. And uh, let's definitely stay in touch. You got anything else that you want to share? Yeah, I mean, um, my podcast is called Digital Marketing Masterclass. It's on every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I have uh, innovators every Wednesday, people like people like yourself that jump on. And if you want to learn marketing in a, in a very consolidated, like lesson by lesson approach, I'd love to have you out. Subscribe, click on the notification. You know, we'd love to just kind of, I believe that the more education I can give people, the better decisions they'll make. 100%. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for doing this. And I'll talk to you soon. All right, everybody. It's Tom Foster and Chris Carr on the World of Marketing. We'll see you soon.